All right, now we're doing the telescoping skateboard, which uses more complex joints, but I think we can do it now. So go under IB Design Class Assembly Tutorial Parts. Don't edit. Don't edit these, okay? Just copy. You guys use parts copy. Do not use backup parts. That's in case you guys, you know, ruin these. So don't uh, edit them. Just copy, all right? Copy, move to your folder if you want. But you can base everything off of this, which is fine. Just make sure that you save it to your folder. So I have my new document here. If not, just press new design and then start your new one. But just control S and then make sure that you are under your folder. You can see it right there. You'll know you're not because it'll be IV design in here and then parts and it'll be like that. Okay, that's a big no-no. Don't do it there. Make sure you're in your folder. It's like, look at all these. This is all just people that have cluttered things up. So put it in your folder. I'm going to put it in my tutorial one. And then telescoping skateboard. All right, you guys better not rip this off, okay? This is a unique invention. No one's made it, okay? Just don't, please. I really like this. So don't go to MIT saying you designed it. We're going to just be under parts and then drag this one in. This is the aluminum uh, body. We're going to press OK. And immediately ground it because that's how we start off all of our assemblies. You want it grounded. Now we're going to insert this wooden piece and it's good when you have like a weird assembly like this one it's good to make your parts oriented so that you just have to finish off the joint they're basically in the area you want them to be so that's close enough I'm gonna do joint capture position because I moved it and select this face that and then rotate underneath and select this and then that and there we go. Press OK. You can see that there's a bit of a gap. That's because I have it for tolerance so that it doesn't, you know, not fit because that would suck. So when you make your IA, I don't know if we'll have to do it with tolerances or not, but I have it just in case something bad happens. So now I have this hole going all the way through. And then that weird geometry makes it so that it's locked as long as this bolt is going through it. Now we're going to use our steel body to complete this part of the frame. We're going to take 003, just drag it in, and then press OK because we need to do some measurements. Uh, you want to orient to the side with the grooves like this. And we want the one that's longer or the three inch side. You can see that this is the longer side. We want the longer side inside this hole. So I'm just gonna move this over here. I'm just dragging it, getting it sort of in the right place. It's close enough. Then we're just gonna joint capture position because I moved it and select the hole that has the longer side to it and then put it in here. Now just press OK, and that's there. Now we're just going to copy and paste this part because I don't feel like dragging it in again. Rotate it 180 degrees because it's going to be mirrored, and move it over here. And if you did it right, the longer side will be the exact same thing. If you don't know which side's longer you can just use the measuring tool and select the two lines if it's the two inch one that's wrong if it's three inches it's right but we're gonna press joint and here and there we go now we have our steel body which hopefully will allow this to work I don't know I'm still gonna make it but it's all in where you put your feet. I'm going to open the data panel again and bring in the carbon fiber portion. And I'm just going to rotate this so that it's where we want it to be. I do that a lot just to save the hassle of messing up the joint. We want it to be there. And then press that to close it. 
and you can see that it came in with the grooves like that. It means that it's going to be the piece that goes underneath. It's a very subtle curve, but it's there so that the other portion can slide easier. So, most important part of this piece is that I want these grooves to line up. So, I'm going to joint my uh, piece based on that groove. So, I'm going to take the center point of this line and the center point of that line and then joint it together. So, joint capture position because I moved it and then select this line here. Make sure you don't get the face, you want that. It might work with the face actually, I'm not sure, it probably will. And then here. And then press OK. And then you'll know you did it because the grooves will line up perfectly on both sides. So now we're just going to put the other portion on there by just copying and pasting it and then flipping it 180 degrees. I like to use the drag, but you can also just put in the keys. I'm not doing it because the microphone's in the way of the number pad, but we're just going to do the same thing here with uh, inside of that groove, and then the top. You can either zoom in or do it far away if you know you got it based off the right thing. I'm mumbling a lot, but oh well. This is valuable stuff here. And now we've got our left side that stays fixed. Now we need to get the portion that actually locks it all together because I wanted this to be detachable so that it's not all just fiberglass together and I would have to get a Dremel to take it apart. So now we're gonna put in our little clamps. So data panel, bring in 005, there's gonna be four of them, and then Come on, all right, press OK. And then we're going to get this side, we're gonna press this hole, and then go right there. And then rotate it to be correct. And there we go. You can see that it clamps it perfectly, it goes inside the groove, and then it's resting on top with a little bit of clearance, which is what you want. And then it just screws in with a quarter 20 bolt because that's my favorite. A lot of this is like one bolt hole. That's because I didn't want it to be super thick. So we're just going to copy and paste these to put it in the other ones. All right, now that you have your four clamps in place, this side is finished. Drag in this piece here, 007. I'm going out of order because it's just easier to joint this portion. And then just press OK, we'll get it in a second. And this piece was built with tolerance in mind, so I'm gonna measure it, both sides, the flat pieces, it's three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to measure the inside of this, and that's 0.95. So I have 0.2 inches, which is 0.1 on both sides. That's because I didn't know the thickness of the fiberglass afterwards. I was going to do a test piece to see how thick, and then change that value. But right now we're just going to put this in the middle with it being 0.1 inches of a gap on both sides so that it slides better. I'm also going to measure this side here just so that I can see if it's the same for inside here. So it's 8.6 and then this interior is, let's see here, 8.75. So we're going to base it 0.1 inches suspended and then 0.075 uh, for the sides and we should be good. So I think it's the same on both sides. Yeah, this is the massive cutting board piece of wood. It just, I don't know, it's because it's flat. But I am going to select this line here. And then I'm going to select this here. 
and it's like that. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it's 180 there. And then you can see that it's touching the top. We don't want that. So we're going to grab this arrow and do negative 0.1. And then we're going to press this arrow, and you can see that both of them are... I'm just going to press OK so you can see what I mean. But there's a gap going all the way around it, so that it's you know easier to slide in and out with the fiberglass on it. So you can see that it's rigid, and we want it to slide. So we're going to double click on this, go over to Motion, and select Slider. And it'll slide in a dimension and in a direction, geez. And you can animate it if you forget what way it's going. That's obviously wrong, so we're just going to pick the right one. It was Y-axis for me. And I'm just going to press OK. And now it can slide. But how does it lock? That's a good question. So we're going to bring in our last piece, which is 006. And we're going to need two of those, but don't worry about that yet. And I can't even see it, so I'm just going to drag it down so I can. And there we go. And before I put this inside the piece, I'm going to put the cotter pins on it. Can't see that, so I'm going to drag it down. And I'm just going to select this face here. And then this circle here. Okay, come on. There we go. You want it to be the this face here. So you just want to either zoom in, whoa, zoom in, and then snap to the one you want, or click on it, and then select the one you want. It's probably easier to do it that way. But you can see that now it's going through the hole. So we want it to go all the way, so we're just going to drag it until it's right. I think it goes there. No, that's stupid. Why would it do that? It's going to go right there. And then press OK. Come on. And we're just going to copy and paste this over to the other side. And like in real life, this dimension isn't going to matter too much, like how far it's in point of it is just for it to lock. So now we want this whole thing to slide in here. You could have made these slide if you want by just changing the rigid to a you know slider but who cares. So I'm just gonna press joint capture position this and then this hole. I'm gonna press flip because that's wrong. And then I'm going to make it a slider because this one does need to slide. And it got it right first try. Look at that. And I'm just going to drag it out and see on the other side if we've got clearance. And no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> wow. How did I think of that? Like, look, it doesn't work. So let me change this. Open, so actually this is a good example. When you're making your CADs, right, and your assemblies and you see that something's off, and you're like, what the heck? You can just use the measure tool, so that's 0 0.08, we'll say. And this one is 0 0.3, we'll say. So we need to make it 2.2 inches longer, so we're going to drag this piece, open it. You don't have to do this because I'm going to fix it. And then if we go over here, it should be bigger. And look at that. Now we've got space to put it in there. But look at that. Now it works. So we're going to do this exact same thing. Just copy and paste it down so that we can do the exact same thing. And I'm going to speed run this.
and we are now done. Save that, showed you how to do assemblies. Cool, probably the last video. Bye-bye.